All right, on number five, we are looking at silver phosphate, which has a KSP of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 18th, and we want to calculate its solubility at first just in pure water. All right, so KSP for the silver phosphate is going to have our three silvers and one phosphate. All right, and we're looking at molar solubility. So for every silver phosphate that dissolves, there would be three silvers and one phosphate. This gets cubed. That's going to be 3 times 3 times 3, so 27S cubed times S. Our KSP should be equal to 27S to the fourth. So let's get out the calculator and solve for S. So our KSP is 2.6, I didn't get the 6, times 10 to the negative 18th, and we'll start by dividing by 27, and then get the cube of that, or the root of that. I get a Solubility of 1.8 times 10 negative fifth. On B, we're going to do that same thing, but now we want to add some sodium phosphate in there. So the KSP would technically be the exact same thing, but what we're going to do is when we plug in our S's now, this is still 3S, we're not doing anything to the silver, but the phosphate's going to have 0.2 molar in there with it. Now in this particular case, since we know the molar solubility is so ridiculously uh, small, the 0.2 is going to be huge by comparison, so we can solve this one by just putting in that 0.2 instead of figuring out the more complex answer, and we'll see what we get there. So I'll have that same KSP of 2.6 times 10 to the negative 18th. And I'm going to divide it by the 27 we get there, and that 0.2. And then I'll take the third root of that. And I get solubility down to 7.8 10 to the negative seventh. Now, on this problem, you could have solved that thing fully. Um, and I'll show you how I do that with uh, the calculator here if I wanted to get it a little bit more accurate. So I'm going to have the 3x cubed times the 0.2 plus x and then I'll move my KSP to the side minus 2.6 times 10 to the negative 18th and theoretically I can graph this where it's crossing zero, and we can find out where that is. We know that that zero is going to be a positive value, somewhere larger than zero, but it's definitely smaller than that 1.8. So I'm just going to go out one click, and that's definitely high enough. And then back up here and hit solve. And if you notice, we get basically the exact same answer. And that really is because that point 0.2 is huge by comparison, that even our approximation is going to be close enough.